You don't and have to. wait, it's Infinity Wars. War. Battles. Sorry. War. <laughs> it's Infinity War, not multiple wars. Okay. All right. All I'm going to say, this is non-spoiler whatsoever about Infinity Wars. Oh, my it- God. <laughs> I feel like you have this podcast memorized. I just can't not say it. I have no idea where this is coming from. I'm Carly. Welcome to Merriment. I'm one half of this podcast. Johnny Jansen is the other. Uh, We're just a couple of parents trying to get some good conversation in after our kid has gone to bed. This week, tensions are running high. I tried structuring the podcast a little bit this time around, and Johnny, he's not feeling it so much. His rebellious nature has been evoked, and so he's getting snarky, and we end up with some marital conflict. In the midst of this tension, you'll hear us talk about the new Infinity War movie in a safe, non-spoiler kind of way, like what not to do before seeing it in theaters, and why I can't seem to get the name right. We also talk about our new favorite comedian, whose special just came out on Netflix, and Johnny's wrapping the busiest few weeks of his life with a new understanding for why direct become dicks. Thanks for hanging out with us. Remember to subscribe to Merry Mint via Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you find your podcasts. Now grab yourself a celebratory beverage, something strong to cut the tension, and join the Merry Mint. And we're live. Yeah. We're on, we rec- we're recording. <laughs> yeah, you practice this one every time and it just gets better and better. Yeah. This uh, opening. This opening. <laughs> and we're live. I tried to get it be as, as like shot. Awkward and, and Awkward. And, I was going to say like planned and consi- like really intentional. In your awkwardness. Yeah. Oh, okay. So can, good job. I can live with that. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to throw us right into it. Mm-hmm. Throw us into this podcast. Well, if, that works because yeah. we're already pretty energized after what just happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we are going to talk about it in this podcast, but we're not going to talk about it just yet because, you know, there needs to be some suspense involved here. So okay. we just saw right. Infinity Wars. And by the way, when we talk about it, we are going to do it in a non spoilerish kind of way. Right. There will be no spoilers in this podcast. So don't worry. We're just going to like talk in extremely cryptic kinds of ways about how Infinity Wars will make you feel. And also what um, going to the movie theater we went to was like. Yeah. Because um, damn. Dang, if you get a VIP experience, I just pulled out one of the chocolates that you can steal We're gonna when, talk you, about when it you're now. walking out the door. Uh, VIP experience, do it. It's oh worth gosh. it. On a Tuesday, on Cheap Tuesday, it's only like 13 bucks. Mm-hmm. Super affordable. You get this amazing, comfortable recliner, lazy boy, mm-hmm. and you get uh, a table service. Yeah, they actually, if you get there early enough, like before the um, movie actually starts, they bring you a menu. You order oh, from the yes. menu. There's oh, full yes. on, you know, alcoholic services. We and got a pitcher. We got a pitcher of we beer. Got a pitcher of beer. We got some uh, cauliflower, popcorn cauliflower. And oh yeah, some tacos and some pizza. pizza, and it was awesome. I don't it was definitely great. you Last need time, to do some shopping around your area to find um, one of these VIP services um, in a movie theater because not all movie theaters do no, this. No, but it's worth it. Last it's time, an entire different section of the movie theater. You go in, there's a bar, there's lounge area that you can like sit and enjoy like some meal service before you go into the movie theater. Yeah, it's awesome. We haven't actually done that yet because no. we're parents to a toddler and you right. just can't get out of the door right. early. But we be- were we were on time tonight and that was a plus. Yes, um, but be careful because last time you... Uh, last time we were at the VIP theater, it's dark and we have glasses of beer and Carly knocks her glass over mm-hmm. and shatters it mm-hmm. in, in the, in the audience. Yeah. That happened. That Embarrassing. Did, definitely. Were you embarrassed? I think it was the time before last time. So the embarrassment is like <clears throat> really wearing off by now. Okay. But and it's because somebody else did it right after. Right. That yeah. really helped to alleviate it. <laughs> it's so funny right. when you're, when you're in a movie theater though, and you can hear just like, actually we had the same experience even amplified when we went to this restaurant called Dark Table. Oh yeah. <clears throat> where it's completely pitch black. Your eyes are open and they just keep straining to like try and pick up a shred of light from anywhere and there's nothing. They're so good. It's a pretty at crazy it pitch ex- black. It's a pretty crazy experience to be in pitch black for two hours straight. While you're eating your meal. Yeah. It's nuts. I swore it was what did I think? It was like lamb stuffed with blue cheese we were sure that or lamb like- with blue cheese dressing mm-hmm. but no 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 just lamb with a gravy just a regular gravy and yeah. it ended up being chicken stuffed with blue cheese yeah 
And it was like, it was like what? way different than what, when they showed way us our different. leftovers as we were leaving, we're like, they must have given us the wrong leftovers. We had lamb. They're like, no, no, this, this is what you had. Crazy. What? But no, the, the point to bring up is when you're in a dark place and you can't like most of your sense, your, your visuals are deprived and you're really relying on your hearing to just pick up things. And you just hear this ching, and somebody goes, Oh no, there's something so comical It's pretty funny about hearing that. Like, the picture just gets drawn in your head about what just happened here. <clears throat> yes, and the picture being drawn is a glass fa- getting knocked off of a table mm-hmm. and hitting the floor and breaking, and um and and it and it really uh, disrupting somebody's dinner. Mm-hmm. That's that would be. I can see the picture that that is being drawn. Uh, to me, the funny part is like the emotions that are going through the person that that just happened to. They're just like <gasps> my drink. Oh. I'm embarrassed. Yeah. <clears throat> That's good. And embarrassing. Yeah. yeah so um, that was the VIP movie experience. Good. And, um, I felt like a very important person watching that movie. It doesn't cost a lot to go be a VIP. You know what I like about uh, when you're at the VIP movie experience is there's a sign there that's just like, movies for grownups. Oh, yeah. I'm just like, I am a grownup. I feel like I, like, I feel like I especially, I, I really enjoyed those extra comforts this time around it's so nice it's the difference between i feel like first class flying mm-hmm. versus just regular economy yeah that would be a good but the price no free champagne at the no movie free theater vip no no but still it, it there's a contrast for sure for sure mm-hmm. so go see it and see infinity war because it's a it's a doozy it's, we're not uh, going to talk about it right now. We're going to talk about it in a second. I thought this, these conversations were supposed to be all flowy. I'm trying to do a structured thing here you where know, we I'll just let, like you, let people you know. go like, ooh, I'm waiting for something to happen. So okay. listening to us banter is actually more bearable. Okay. Yeah. You're the <laughs> boss. <laughs> because also I think something that preludes this movie that we saw tonight is how freaking worn out we have been leading up until this point that earned us seeing this movie and going to the VIP experience. Yeah. Like the amount of work, didn't you say that this is the busiest you've ever been in this your is the busiest life? <clears throat> yeah. This is probably the busiest I've ever been in my whole life. Ever since I was a babe, ever since I was a young, young child. I actually saw a transformation in you between last night and this morning. Really? Yeah. Like a very um, tangible transformation wow. this morning. When you got up, you were, all, you just kind of like you seemed so much more chill and relaxed, and you 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 told me you really appreciate me. Wow, you were really I did engaged that? Engaged with Forrest, and wow. and you were just like you were here, and like you haven't really been here for the no. past two or three weeks. You know, I've been that I've been that dad in in those movies that the family's disappointed in because busy because he works too much. Missing it. Yeah, right. And I'm like, but I'm providing for the family. Ah. It's kind of it, it, it's it's funny. I've always in those type of movies. I I've always been like, you know what? You're you're kind of hard on hard on dad here. You're like hard on Peter he's Panning. Like, he's he's he, was that his name? Yeah. No. Oh yeah, Robert Robert uh, Robbie Robert Robert Robin Williams. Williams. <laughs> Robert. His character was Peter Panning. No. Yeah. I don't believe that. It's for real. You want to look it up? That does sound like a Steven Spielberg, th- like a cheesy Steven Spielberg thing. Well, because that then they can call it out when they're like, you're Peter Pan. He's like, no, no, no. You <laughs> got it Panning. all wrong. This is That's the mistake. Stupid. It's panning. That is outrageous. You want to go look it up? Yeah, but I don't just, even know just how Google we search, look it up. Just Google search Peter Panning and Hook will come up. I'm just going to look uh, up. What? No, you're not doing what I said. This is going to be way longer. You know what? You can be in control of the structure of this podcast. I'll be in control of how I internet search. All right. See, here we go. Peter, Peter Banning with a B. That's false. IMDb is wrong. Dude, IMDb is correct. <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> it is not correct. Oh, man. It's like the Berenstain Bears all over again. <laughs> no, it's Peter Banning. That is kind of crazy. Yeah. That's pretty close. But still, I, I tell you, it was Peter I, Panning. I, I, Peter Banning. <sighs> Heroes Wiki. Heroes. Peter Banning. <laughs> He wasn't a hero. Hook film in Wikipedia. Peter Banning. Could have sworn it was panning this whole time. Wow, mind wow. blown. Mind blown. Jeez. Anyway, you, you've been that dad a little bit, but you were able to um, sympathize with those other dads. And me too, actually, like because because I am compassionate to you and you know we kind of 
our, our minds can intermingle with each other somewhat. So I was able to really get a point of view from you who you love your work, you love what you do. And also you're trying to, this is the time right now for you to continue you know, planting seeds in your career and getting to this dream that you have of where you want to be. Yeah. And I, I, I I want, I'm at the stage now where it makes the most sense to everything I do to just do the best I can, because that's going to bring forth new and better opportunities. So like any project that I work on, if it's not a, if it's not going to be added to my portfolio, then it's a, it's just a terrible waste of time Mm -hmm. and i'd rather especially now that time is so valuable that if i'm spending time away from my family it better damn well be worth it Mm -hmm. not just financially totally but like these last things i've been working on are going to open up some serious doors yeah and i appreciate that and also what i appreciate is the fact that you doing all of this work is part of the reason why i am not having to go to work full time right now and why i can be doing freelance work from home two days a week instead of going somewhere for five days a week. Yeah, I so am, that uh, aspect of it. But I will say, these like these past few weeks that we've had that have been so intense, where like I've been running the house and I've been getting up with Forrest every morning, and most I think you were still doing bedtime routines with him sometimes. Yeah, but sometimes I was carrying like most of the load of the whole house and taking care of Forrest and everything, even on the weekends. Yeah. And um, you know, powering through that, knowing that this is not the norm. This is not the ideal that we strive for. This is just right now. Yeah. And we're going to get through this. Even like Johnny is recognizing that this is too intense for the norm as well. Well, so I got, that's I'm getting sick. Me. That's the thing. I'm getting stress sick. Mm-hmm. I, I went to the doctor because I'm I'm just feeling weird. I'm you feeling like pain sick. in your neck. Pain and in my neck and, and in my jaw and even in my nose, like weird things. And he, I just explained to him my situation and he's just like, uh, I'll give you some antibiotics, but uh, you need a vacation, and then come in for a psychiatric evaluation after your vacation. <laughs> yeah, after after you've had some time to settle down, let's see, like where basically, your head's actually. Because I was kind of just like, oh, like he's like, "How are you doing?" I'm like, oh, I'm I, I'm I'm conflicted because I feel." Did you cry? No. Oh, I wish. I just feel like sometimes when like when somebody, a medical professional, like stops you in the midst of all this crazy shit that's going on, when they stop you to just be like, how you doing? You're just like, I'm not good. (laughs) You know? (laughs) No. I think if like a little, a baby did that to me, I would cry. But just a If a baby asked you how, I would too. I'd be like, you're not supposed to be able to do that. (laughs) Or just like, you know, genuinely cared. Just being like, oh, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, when you are working this hard and you're just like feeling the weight of it all physically and mentally, it's just there's a there's a breaking point. Yeah, and plus my fuse is uh, shortened significantly mm-hmm. for things. And I get more startled easily. Like, oh, yeah, you were getting mad at me just when I'd walk into the office. It wasn't mad. Office. It was genuine fear. Oh, what? Yeah, I just Actual get... Actual fear. Yeah, I walk yeah. up to you in the office. You've got your headphones on. You're working. And I touch your shoulder and you're just like, Gah! Yeah, because I'm, I'm so in the zone and so focused. I think that's why there's... It's like the whole feng, feng shui. Feng shui? Feng shui? <laughs> Fo, fa. F- fi, fa, fam. fa. Fa. Uh, uh, it's why don't have your back towards the door. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, right. And that's in in the office. That's how that's the setup. And so it's yeah, it's pretty startling. Mm-hmm. Pretty startling. Pretty startling. And then also like when when I'm even when I'm in the kitchen, it's oh it's usually when I have headphones in. Mm-hmm. I think, and and it's almost like riding but bi- riding on a bike with headphones, and then a car drives past you, and like from behind. And it's like just usual, but you couldn't hear it coming. And so your spidey senses weren't activated. Right. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I almost died. Right. That's what I get whenever I'm like listening to a podcast and clean up the kitchen. You come out of the room and do that to me. So it's what you're saying like, is that you were in a different world and all of a sudden you're transported back into this world. Sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. it's just like I'm not ready for it. If all, It would almost would be better if you kind of come into my a field of view before touching me. <laughs> I just have this vision of me just like popping my f- happy, stupid face in front of your face. Maybe like, that might hey. be even more scary. <laughs> Maybe that started. It'll just me make you more mad. You're just like, get oh, out of my vision. It's not mad. It's not <laughs> mad. Uh, but I, I, you know, I feel like you. I feel like you, because you respond so much to people being mad at you, 
it's at, like you you hate it you hate when it's just like any any worst. kind of like negative um energy directed towards me is difficult for me to handle right but is that being direct if it's reactionary is that being directed towards you like if it's just like ah like if you scare somebody and they make a frightful noise would that is that directed to you or is that just an exclamation you know it really depends on the sound you make because yeah. if i startled you and you went ah and then i'd be like oh you know he was startled but you're like ah you know, it's a growl, like you kind of growl at me. Oh, yeah, and, maybe. and then that would I t- I t- would take directed at. Me. Yeah, I think it's sometimes because it's like in my when I have these deadlines and truly like what I had to do and what I successfully did was in my mind seemed impossible, but I just wouldn't think of. I just didn't think of the odds. I didn't. This is why I'm bad at time management because I I know I'm often wrong and I can do things quicker. I know it sounds right. weird. So, but it, or if I plan too much, I'll do things slower. So I just kind of trust my gut, which isn't which isn't a good thing. But in this case, it worked out. I reached my deadline, and I pulled off what felt like see, like impossible. You know what that sounds like to me? One of my a favorite superhero. sayings ever by Mary Kay: Aerodynamically, the bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly. But the bumblebee doesn't know this, so it keeps on flying anyway. Yeah, that's me. Basically, you're just not... That's why I'm not a good project manager. You're not acknowledging <laughs> that it could fail, so you're just like, it's not gonna. I'm just gonna yeah. plug away. Yeah, yes. And uh, But, you know, that also means I'm at a certain pace, so when things are slowing down my pace, I get stressed out, mm-hmm. and I get super anxious about it, mm-hmm. because it's I've cr- almost I've created these very strict boundaries around my time, and if anything gets in the way, um, I probably get pretty snappy. Mm-hmm. Like, man, if I'm like, if I get, it's interesting as the, as I'm starting to understand, like just starting to understand what a director is like, what a director does. Mm-hmm. It, like I could totally see how directors become dicks, how they become just like jerks because I like have if this you, vision that needs to be executed and you're getting in my way. Yeah. Or if you're just like phoning it in or it's like i hired you to do this thing and you are like you're Mm -hmm. not doing it it's like that's so it's i could see see that being so frustrating Mm -hmm. especially when the stakes are way higher and people are making a lot of money you've had those exact experiences in the past week have you not kind of Mm -hmm. yeah but you know keep, keep my cool but it's i could see how over time in the film industry it's like it's it's known for you'll you'll be called out if you make a mistake you're Mm going to be just like publicly ridiculed you're the one who has to deliver yeah that happened to a friend of a friend of mine who dp'd this last music video shoot um he's been in the film industry since he was like 15 years old and uh he was like a film loader and he made a mistake and he he accidentally sent because you, you it was his job to load the film and then send it off to get developed like actual film mm. and he accidentally shipped off the new film and loaded oh, the old no. film back into the camera but he corrected <gasps> his mistake and part of the union is you immediately have to tell your superior and superior literally like dragged him out in front of everybody and just screamed at him wow and just like just like bah. so yeah. you wonder where that you know that the origin of the type of energy that tells him Christian Bale when he was screaming, when he was caught that audio of him screaming at somebody who yeah. was like walked into his eye line while he was doing a scene. That's just what especially it's like actors, on set for a lot yeah, of people. Especially actors when you've trained for this role, when you've, you, you, you know, like especially big actors like that who have a big, high, it's high stakes for them too yeah. for it to be successful. Mm-hmm. And it's like the weakest link breaks the chain. You totally. know what I mean? And, uh, Every minute is as thousands of dollars on those kind of sets. So, and I, and I kind of like that. I like that seriousness and it makes me only want to work with professionals. It makes me want to just like, I can't wait. I was talking to my friend about this. It's just high performance is what it is. I can't wait. I can't wait until I know it sounds crazy, but I'm like, like on the late thirties, and I'm more well into my career and my peers have all kind of also matured. And mm-hmm. then now I'm more 
where I'm just working with professionals. I can afford professionals and everybody has a really high standard mm-hmm. and then you can just do more and you can accomplish more. And it's, yeah. That's yeah, cool. I'm looking forward to that. I'm always going to be the person encouraging you to remember to be compassionate throughout all of that, throughout the like, you know, coming down on people because they need to deliver. And I agree, like some of the slip ups that happen when you're working with people are unacceptable but still coming at things yeah. so that you're not being a total dick. But also just like understand that it's just business. Mm-hmm. You know, understand that it's like this, this is, isn't personal, but no. you need to know this is unacceptable. And so, and it's it's interesting though cuz sometimes it is important for people to feel a little bit like shot, have that experience where like somebody gets mad at them mm-hmm. or like they really mess something up and right. they, you know, cause then they so won't they do it again. That, exactly. Yeah. Like that's what my um, buddy was telling me about. And he's like, had I never made another mistake after that? Right. And then it's like, yeah. But then also in the same time, he's like, he makes sure that he never goes hard. You know, he doesn't do that shocking experience for people, but he'll more, he'll be hard on people, but a bit more like nice about it yeah and it's like honestly like if you mess up or if you're not doing your best it's really gonna it's gonna affect your career because it's like i'm starting to get into the position of being able to recommend people to other you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like i can really i am about i can help people with their freelance business but if you know if i have a bad experience and if i recommend them to somebody then that's you know that's on me Mm -hmm. that's a bad that's my name it's all of a sudden mud mm-hmm. to my clients. Totally. So, so you really need to be careful of who you're recommending. It's yeah, huge. Yeah. Anyways, that's just business. It's but for all this said, boring. it's funny that's because so boring. no, it's not boring. I think it's, it's very fascinating. Boring. I no. feel like that's the most boring part of my job. What? Answering emails and maybe it is. It's, we it's, haven't even it's talked all, about answering emails. <laughs> oh, everything. It's just corresponding. You know, maybe it just seems boring because you're like, oh, this is just my world. But to a lot of people understanding the like ins and outs of somebody who's working in video and film and who's doing directing is is quite fascinating and it is for me oh well oh there you go but you know what i wanted to talk about is um this this kind of like we're we're in our gender roles right now you know what i mean and i know you were feeling that especially for a while there um just feeling like you have to work extra hard because i'm home with the baby and you you know this is your role you need to deliver the bread right uh-huh. and you're just like taking on all of this extra work how do we how do we like still because it's easy to start falling into these you know predisposed ways of living like i'm the mom and i do all the cooking and cleaning and i take care of the baby and the dad doesn't really pay attention to you know our side of the world because he's got his he's got to keep his head in his business and like that's just not my ideal right like existence we when we got together we love to do everything together. We love to like share life together. That's right. what we wanted to do this for. So like, how do we, how do we find that balance? I feel like maybe the separation or the, the gender roles are more exaggerated with infancy, but you know, like when the kid is younger and needs the milk and it's, and it is your responsibilities just your responsibilities are just naturally unless of course we went to formula and and be, but because we wanted the more natural way of doing things and you're nursing a lot you have that physical bond with force there and, is that and, for sure but i mean i think and also just like taking a year off mat leave you know and then i it's and then not deciding to not go back totally. that's that's the huge that's well, huge. I think I think that that's that's the explanation for if you were only doing your full time work, you know. But like when you're doing extra freelance work, so that I can be doing what I'm doing, and so then you know you're not you're you're working in the evenings now too, and sometimes on the weekends, yeah. or you know what I mean. That's when things kind of get really out of balance. But you know what I like is that I'm starting to get some freelance work, like as opposed to just doing my own. Um, creative projects that I've been wanting to take on, like editing some videos yeah. that we've taken in the past, yeah. and, you know, working on this podcast, et cetera. Um, I'm being hired to do some freelance writing, as you cool. know, and it's super exciting. And so I now, as I'm going to be writing some of this stuff for Ocean Wise, and, you know, that's something else I wanted to talk about entirely because, oh my gosh, we use way too much plastic. But anyway. Oh, we're going to talk about plastic. Uh-huh. But, um, but no, just being able to um, 
takes some of that weight off of you again. So it's not just you feeling like you need to be the sole breadwinner, but yet I can still be home most of the time with Forrest. You see, I didn't take the then it comes up where it's like I didn't take these jobs for the money. Right. I took these jobs for the opportunity and for the, you know, like that's really. But we still, yeah, I agree. And like you, I, did, you did say that you felt like you, we needed to earn more as well but sure, we still sure. need to find a balance yeah and 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 it's hard when you make these decisions because it's like these videos that i produce i'm gonna are extremely valuable to my portfolio and it's means i'm able to manage a higher budget and can get other jobs and with our plan of mm-hmm. the future because i don't want to have a full-time job in the future i want to mm-hmm. kind of be a freelance director that's Totally. That's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal is all. I think that that would probably be where our ideal is, is where eventually you're not working a full time job. What you're doing is working as a contractor. Yeah. And I mean, ideally, it would would be signing to like an agency Mm -hmm. as a director and then they provide me with the work and then I go and do it or. And it's higher paid so you don't have to do it as much. And And then uh, or like I, I get into directing commercials or like a show. And that's also why it's vital that I pursue these like I'm working on a few things like like a documentary and a pilot like mm-hmm. I, I you have to have your your stamp your I don't know you your, have to prove style. that you can do it and if oh, those opportunities kind of come up you got to take them mm-hmm. and they have been coming up for me this year but I don't know yeah it's hard to find that balance it is hard it? because yeah I mean and I feel like this has like been I don't know in, if we're to talk about like our relationship mm-hmm when we started you had a career like you've had kind of multiple careers not careers but like jobs where you like you were really into radio and then you think people call that careers yeah yeah, different careers for sure but then you ah you weren't you weren't feeling it and you Mm -hmm. just were is frustrated and then got out of it and then you kind of started what seemed like felt like from scratch and then you got a job as a writer and that Mm -hmm. started going up and then forest you know that came along and then we took a break Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it's like I don't know. I I haven't had that kind of that stop and go. Right. So yeah, it feels like you also, man. I imagine like a f- taking a full year off would really blow a momentum in in a career. Yeah, that's why for it's sure. crazy when it's all a matter of perspective and understanding that this is just now. Like talking to um um Kathy, she's the um uh CFO at the at Oceanwise. Mm-hmm. So she's got a fantastic career, but she took nine years off to have kids. Nine years off. Yeah. So it's like, but she ended up having a crazy career. So it's funny. We can, we often think like, like our last month, like, oh no, this could be forever. But it's just, it's just now. And yeah, that's the thing is now always feels like how it's going to be forever. Isn't that funny? Yeah. And it's interesting, like talking to, um, on this trip to Vietnam, talking to these, um, I was traveling with two older guys they're in their 40s and they've they have quite fantastic careers and they all said the same thing they're just like yeah when we first got started it was just like when you're on the rise it is intense and you have all these opportunities and you have to be smart and don't make decisions based on money make decisions based on opportunity Mm -hmm. and then you kind of it levels out and then you can kind of manage it properly but it feels like and that happens like every 10 years or so and I'm about on 10 years of me working at this career and things are just starting to explode. That's so cool. That's very exciting. I think exciting. that's what we're kind of experiencing right now. Mm-hmm. Nice that we are coming off with a little bit of a lull now and we're going to go on vacation. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. So excited. We booked a trip to Salt Spring Island. Right. We did this thing where we, we Johnny was saying, oh man, I really need like a vacation to Mexico or something. And I was looking into it and I was like, man, with a baby going to Mexico with the flights. With a you know, toddler. With a toddler. Taking a toddler, a toddler on now. like nighttime flights to get where we're going. And then when we get there, we still have to take a bus or get to the rental car or whatever. And then, you know, depending on where you're staying, it's going to be so hot. Like this is not the time of year necessarily to go to Mexico huh. and, you know, let alone with a toddler who, you know, was going to burn and stuff. So then we were like, why don't we just go somewhere that's really cool, kind of in our area that we normally would yeah. not go to because it's too expensive right, for us to do. And we're like, well, you know, it's just maybe we would take like a one day trip to Salt Spring Island. But we were like, 
let's just go. We'll get a cottage right on the waterfront and we'll spend a lot less than if we were going to go to Mexico, but we'll have a kick-ass vacation at like the end of May when the weather is turning nice. Yes. And it's like here in the nature that we've been wanting to get into yeah. anyway. And I'm, that's going to be great. Yeah. And I, it's hard to th- imagine that right now, to be honest. Because we still have a ways to go, a couple of weeks. And just the way that I think I don't, I think I've mentioned this before on this podcast. I'm not as, I'm not a future thinker. Mm-hmm. I need You're pretty to be, in the now. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty in the now. Um, so like, especially when it comes to vacations or travel, it was like, but even before going to Vietnam, I was talking to my brother on the phone and he's like, you excited? And I was like, genuinely like, not yet. You were so busy leading up to it though too. And I will say so far, we've had a couple of times now where we've like gotten extremely excited about this vacation we're going to go on. So oh, yeah, so that's, you're getting that's there. true. That's, and even when we went to Hawaii, we made up a song about it. Mm, did we? <coughs> we're going to Hawaii. <laughs> remember we had seen that <laughs> i don't remember we're that at all we're going to hawaii when we bought the tickets on the plane we were just like we're going to hawaii oh yeah oh yeah we're going there's to such hawaii. a rush when you buy your when you do something like buy that plane tickets oh, yeah. yeah and then there's that initial rush but then it's leading up to it that's like oh, okay mm-hmm. and then you're on the plane and it's like what <gasps> I'm so excited we're not taking a plane to go on vacation yeah me too it's just a nice little ferry ride although i must say um, flying business class is having done it. I've well, I don't know. I don't know if it's business class. It's not first class. It was premium economy, was premium, it not? Yeah, yeah. And but I think what that's, is business class? Is business know. class premium economy, or, or is, it, is first it first class? class? I don't know. First class seemed a bit ridiculous. First class is like okay, that's yeah. Like I don't know. That's it. Just most hotels a bit, aren't even that fancy. No, it's eh, I don't know. But, but premium economy it was the sweet spot. Leg room. You get these like little packages with tooth with like face cream and a toothbrush and toothpaste and like an eye mask and socks. Mm. And there's socks. just like you get your you don't have to share an armrest with anybody. You get your own. And your chair leans back more than the other ones. It leans back. It's it's wonderful. Yeah. So. Uh, you know what this is making me realize? What? How tired I am right now. All of a sudden, just hit. Really? Thank you. Oh, what? Because I'm talking about leaning mm-hmm. back With and all. Warm socks and an Man, eye mask. It was at the point where we were like, we were getting exhausted because it was an intense trip and it was near the end and we we're like, I can't wait to go on that plane <laughs> and have like a great 14 hour just relax i have never felt like that in my that entire crazy? life i'm so excited to just no that's a lie actually i have we just i have like been looking forward movies? to that there's something nice about and on that. the big long both trips i had nobody two seats next to me so i just got to like lounge it was great it was just like a chance to just like hang out and sit around Oh my Besides gosh. the travel diarrhea, I feel like yeah, that that sounded pretty <laughs> terrible. You're like, and I gotta. It was go only near again. the end. It was only near the end, and then got bad when we got home. There must have been something like extra special about that plane ride, though, because we don't get plane like, rides like that anymore. As parents to a toddler, no. Well, like, I did when we went to Hawaii. It was definitely not a plane ride like that. So, like the contrast. Ah, uh, the one the way home was pretty nice with Forrest. Oh, I guess I was just doing all. the nursing with him most of the time. Yeah, I guess so. But I got well, even when you weren't nursing, I was holding him, and he's he just loved to be cuddled. Mm-hmm. Now he'd just want to run around. Yeah, that's that all would be, he'd want to do. That's all he does want to do. We Although just, we've we, we've discovered this new thing in the mornings. I can't believe we didn't discover this sooner. We have a pullout couch uh, in the den of our house, and so, but we haven't even thought of using this in the mornings when Forrest wakes up super early, like six a.m. One of us usually, only one of us, because like <coughs> only that's a one terrible of us. waste of sleep for one person, for both of you, us to yeah, be getting up at that point. Yeah, it's normally been me, but lately it's been you. Mm-hmm. So, and I was sick and kind of feeling desperate because Johnny got to bed at like probably 3 a.m. And I am feeling like junk, but I'm not about to get him to wake up instead. So I pulled the pullout couch out and Forrest and I lied in bed and the TV's right there where we have Chromecast hooked up. So we had music playing and we're just... Apparently, this is all he wanted to do because up until I pulled this bed out, he was crying and he was fussing and just following me around and I couldn't seem to figure out, like, what is it that you want? What do you want, little guy? What do you need? What do you need, little boy? And so, finally, we get into this pullout bed and he is so 
happy. All he wants to do is loll around over on my body and listen to music and tell me when he wants a new song. And then he stops and he listens to see if he likes it. And then he'll start dancing a bit. And then he'll decide he wants a new song. And then he goes, new, new. And then I switch the song again. And that was just what we did for hours. And that's, that's awesome. Extra hours of me in bed in the morning. It's freaking genius. Wow. Yeah. You know what? Maybe if we have a plane, we just need to get him headphones. See, to get, yeah. I, you can get splitters. I saw one. There's like four. It's four headphones. A four splitters. jack splitter. You can plug in four headphones, what? but we just use three. And we get him headphones. Right. Like and we all baby listen. headphones. And I'm sure he would just like, it would blow his mind. Hmm. And we just like have all of these, all this music already planned. I feel like we're still at least a few months away from him leaving the headphones on his head no matter how much he loves the music i feel like he'd still take it off and just be like oh man i I feel like as soon as it's uh, he'll realize when he takes it off and the music stops he'll he's getting smart enough Mm -hmm. i think it's It's not like hats i know what you're saying because with hats he does the same thing he takes it off and then he's like that's so funny he tries to put it back on it falls off and he's like well that was fun but once he clues in and looks in the mirror and is like oh i look great Mm -hmm. then Maybe he'll want to wear, ha- he'll want, he'll be like, please, daddy, and mommy, can, mm-hmm. you, can I wear a hat? Like I was trying to put on that um, Egyptian Fez hat that yeah. we have. Mm-hmm. And it was so awesome. And if he was, we just had him walking around with that Fez, it would have been <laughs> hilarious, but he just wouldn't, he wouldn't have it. It's like, why are you putting this toy on my head? No, but then he saw himself in the mirror. Did Were he? you not there? No. He saw himself in the mirror with his hat on and you just got this great Wait, big this grin. this happened? And he was trying to put the hat back on his head, but he just sucked at it. So it was falling off. And that's what I think would happen with the headphones. Wait a second. So this actually happened? It did. It went down oh in real life. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. So we, what about, that's why I know that it would happen with the headphones too. He'd be like, wow, this is crazy. Wow. And then he'd try to put it back on, but they won't stay. He'll be more fascinated with the wearing of the headphones than actually listening to the music. Huh. I Let's agree to disagree on that one and try it out. Okay. Let's try it. Yeah, let's I try think, it I think tomorrow. he would love it. Let's try it tomorrow. No, you know what? Let's wake him up right now. Let's go wake him up, <laughs> no, buddy. No, I shouldn't say that because at any moment he could. Yeah. Or we could talk about spooky things. No, we're not going to do that. And we have not yet talked about Infinity Wars, so... It's not Infinity Wars. What is it? It's Infinity War. It's only one war. What? There's tens of tons of wars. No, there's tons of battles. I guess you're right. One tons war. of battles make up one war, right? I feel like I feel <laughs> like if, it up. I feel like if there's multiple wars, they're all for different reasons. And if they combine, they'd be like, what war are you fighting? <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know anything about that war. I'm doing this war. That's true. So it's Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Part one. Mm-hmm. But wait. Before we get to that, I just want to say I planted the plants to keep my cat from pooping outside of the neighbors wow. today. I Congratulations. did that. Wow, congratulations. Thanks. That's great. I'm proud of you. Felt really good. And uh, I didn't buy enough plants, though. There's still lots of dirt for her to dig Got to get more plants. But now she'll just look prettier amongst the flowers while she does it. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, honestly, maybe it's the skeptic side of me. I think we're just creating a great bathroom for her. As yeah, opposed she's just to like, blocking oh, this her. is so nice. I think the ideal thing is to, like, put seashells on it actually i think i just got to keep the soil wet now because cats do not like going to the bathroom where it's wet they're oh, just like yeah. oh my paws are getting dirty i bet that would have been th- just if you just watered it instead of buying all new plants i would have I feel so weird about watering just nothing dirt yeah, yeah that's so true. now at least i'm watering something now you have a purpose that's not based around keeping a cat out it's <laughs> keeping plants in yeah keeping yeah. them happy. happy and fresh and, mm-hmm. and alive and they're great. beautiful i planted a strawberry plant and oh, some flowers and oh. some rosemary rosemary that's right Lo- friggin love rosemary yeah rosemary it's probably my favorite herb what's yours no it's actually i have to say mine's dill favorite her herb mm-hmm. basil or oh, i can't choose or time, time. i knew you were gonna say time it's, What's it's everyone's not like favorite butter. Herb? It tastes like butter or sorrel. Sorrel's good. Or probably well, we don't use sorrel. No, but I love it. Remember oh. when we had that crazy garden? Oh yeah. Yeah. So or like or a arugula ago. is arugula a herb? No, herb? it's not a herb. Uh, maybe sorrel isn't. Sorrel isn't. I don't herb. think it is either. It's okay, so I'm gonna go for basil. Basil. <clears throat> Basil. <sighs> different herbs, say. different days of the week. Different herbs, different. Um, blurbs Mm -hmm. oh hey when is the music video coming out by the way um well i i asked and uh 
they just needed it to give to their publicist because they're going to be their publicist is going to just like shop it around before they hit live so that maybe like a website or a blog will post it first oh i see so that'll yeah. be a release there will yeah. be like a, a um a high profile release i get it because yeah, yeah, yeah. i just want to see um our baby bo- bro- rocket boy rocket boy make his debut Make his debut. Yeah, Forrest is in a music video. He's a rocket boy in space. Yeah, that's what was killing me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're just that's looking at your baby's face for hours and hours on end. Looking at his body too, mm-hmm. not just his face, because that's making him an, on a jetpack. Mm-hmm. He was a rocket boy. He was a real big time space baby going to cookie moons and face planets. And spoilers, uh, he turns into a star. Yeah, he he's a, he turns a, into star a star is born. A star is born. <laughs> yeah, no, the music video is for JP Maurice. JP the Maurice. Rocket. Yeah. Yeah. It's for JP the Maurice. JP the Maurice, yep. Yeah. Actually, Forest if is. you go to jpthemaurice.com, you might find the music video, but probably not yet. No. But did you know that's his website? Yeah. JP the Maurice. That's because of you, right? It's because of me. Because mm-hmm. his name is JP Maurice. Yeah, John, but John that Paul sounds Maurice. weird. I always sound JP Maurice. It's needed a the. And so I, I, I would love to see you just say that to his dad's face. Yeah, JP uh, Maurice sounds weird. It sounds weird. It should, your son, Jean, Jean Paul who Maurice. you named Jean Paul Maurice, I'd should say have Jean Paul Maurice. <laughs> Jean Paul Maurice sounds great. JP Maurice. It sounds weird. JP the Maurice sounds like, ooh, like. He I'm is. glad that you're it offering a like solution he, because initially it just seems like you're teasing him. No, JP no, no. Maurice sounds weird. No, no, you know, he's just no. Like <laughs> it's a solution based problem. And uh, it sounds like it's just like him being himself, you know? JP the Maurice. Yeah. It's mm. like, yeah. Johnny the Jansen. Yeah. What does that mean? Johnny the Jansen. Well, it's a, it does make sense. You are a Jansen. Yeah. No, I am the Jansen. The. Yeah. Car- yeah. Carpe diem. Carpe diem. <laughs> um, Is that what that means? Can we just talk about our new favorite comedian? Yeah. We we discovered you guys have to listen to this guy. So I actually watched an interview with him recently that was um, him saying he was nervous. Well, not nervous, but like excited to get his Netflix special out because people in the Americas have never heard of him. And he if, if people actually just sit down to watch this four episode Netflix comedy special, he'll be pleased even if they hate it. He's just like, wow, people in the Americas actually saw me. James A. Caster on Netflix. He has a four episode series and it's actually just stand-up comedy it's so funny i've never seen we'll like, post a comedy the trailer we'll post the trailer on there's a trailer on netflix yeah there's a trailer for oh most netflix things he's so funny he's like he's like a a, a boy he's yeah. like a little boy he's but he's best. not he's like 32 years old divorced and whoa so you know funny. about him he talks about it oh yeah he mentions both of those things in his <laughs> Mate, you know what i was i was half listening because i was working Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I the want. times that I, w- w- the half of me that was listening, thought it was pretty funny. I just really love that with all of the comedians that like, you you listen to and watch. So many comedians, you're always the one telling me about comedians, oh, and me, the well, one that I find on Netflix, and I'm like Johnny, Johnny, you've got to watch this guy. He's so funny. I only and then listen to him, and then you tell me he's actually he's actually your favorite comedian right I'm just now. Like, what? He's my favorite How did comedian I right now. Find your favorite comedian after all. Yes. Not of all time. What does it mean then if you say he's my favorite comedian right now? Like who's popular, who's releasing or just like stuff. Right now, it's like, oh, my favorite comedian is him. So like tomorrow you could be like, nah, not Anthony anymore. Anthony Jesnick. <laughs> I love him. Tomorrow. Okay, so your favorites don't actually mean anything. All time favorites do. Which I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't I pick feel like favorites, I feel like having probably... I feel like having an all time favorite, like I got a He's got to he's got to be somebody that's really been. It can't just be like one special, and I'm like, oh, that's, that's it. That's true because I gotta their specials know need them to be as consistent, a, especially comedians, because you got to know their personality. Mm-hmm. It's not like a movie. But that's what I like about this like four episode special is that his personality really comes through. Yeah, he's so funny. Yeah, he's great. Um, Spoilers, but we went to what? He dies at the end. <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch out for those comedy specials, man. Yeah. He, could you imagine if it, one of those, he, they actually die? Be pretty sad. Can I have some of that toilet paper? I got to blow my nose. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear nose being Nobody blown. wants to hear that. We actually went to a comedy show 
a few nights ago, last week. We did another date night. Time is bar just hop. not a thing for me these days. Yeah, I somehow just... somehow we managed to get up for this date, which was actually a miracle because yeah. my cousin and his girlfriend were moving away, very far away, and this was like our very last chance to see them. So you rallied. You like I rallied. Feared. Thank goodness that my the guy I hired to do it, uh, editing for it, um, dropped the ball on my deadlines. <laughs> thank that's, goodness. That's what, that's what the reason why I was able to do it. Oh, to be honest, oh, so right, right, right. That of is course. a miracle because he was supposed to deliver on Monday. He didn't. No. So Tuesday night, that meant you hadn't. You weren't able to start work. So, yep. so we went to Everything a comedy show for a reason. Yeah, for a reason or two. Um, we went to the Kino Cafe for it was a comedy, uh, comedy night. Was it, it an was amateur a, comedy? It was night? open mic night. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Was it really? Yes, it was. Oh, well, I'm not going to argue about that because I don't argue. Clearly, I don't know much about that, but I will say. The trend that I noticed with comedy, with people getting up to do comedy, is so many people just vent about things they don't like. Complaining. Yeah, there's a lot just, of complaining. There's just a whole bunch of, I mean, and I, I totally get it because we're, most of the time, we're just showing like our best happy selves on social media and, you know, just trying to remain positive in pleasant conversation. But then you get on stage for a comedy show and this is where you let it all hang out. And then there's the shock value of like, oh, you really said that, you know? But it just made me think, okay, next time I'm going to write a stand up comedy bit, it's not going to be ranting about things that I don't like or stuff that I saw that I didn't like. And if I talk about my kid, my kid's not a no, stupid idiot yeah because every time people talk about their kids they always just talk about yeah. being a parent in in the worst light i feel like that's the whenever you bring up a, being a parent talking about how your kid is evil or mm. dumb it just feels like so cliche yeah it's just or like, just like such a, such a drag on your <clears throat> life it's or, the you know. easiest thing to do like that's what it bugs me when people call their kids jerks mm -hmm, or just you know it's like that's yeah, come on, come up with something else. Actually, my kid is the light of my life. So yeah, so you should reevaluate your perspective, buddy. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. Yeah. So those Mommy, are the two things Daddy. I noticed about uh, going out to comedy and taking a couple of notes here. Negativity, bring it down. Wow. Yeah. Find some clever jokes. That's what unless, I like about James A. Caster. Unless so your clever. character is, unless you do it in like a in like a really petty way, where the joke is you being annoyed with things because that's what james does in his comedy routine but it's his delivery too that he just seems like this like sulky petulant boy but, but, but the, he's still being good natured in a way about yeah, it too but the joke is how petty he is yes totally and and like he prick. still is complaining <laughs> and it's but it's funny not in the way that's like oh you don't you hate people on buses yeah no it's, <laughs> it's people funny. with backpacks on buses suck yeah like f that. you no, yeah. he's he's actually like what's funny about James A. Caster when he starts to go down like that negative spiral is it's funny that you're watching this person fall apart, basically. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what he's writing it for. So that's that's the funny part about it. He's really smart. Mm -hmm. Really smart, really funny. Don't and forget uh, James A. Caster Netflix special. He's freaking hilarious. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. I surely didn't. And uh Okay, now can we talk about Infinity Wars? Sure. I just thumped the toilet paper. Sure, you're the boss. All right. You're the boss in this podcast. Especially when I you're thump really, the toilet paper. Especially when you thump it. Yeah. But you, I wanted to say, no, you are driving this podcast. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that yeah. that was the deal from the get-go, was it not? You're like, was I don't want to do any work on this podcast. I That's just want to sit down in front of the but microphone. But normally we, we meander a little bit more. But this time you're like, no, we're, trying not, something new. we're not talking about this. Okay. Right. Well, I mean, we're just we're, we're just going to try it out because sometimes uh, if I were to be honest, at the beginning of the podcast, I was so ready to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Not into it right now. Well, watch this. We're going to get into it. <sighs> what if I don't want to? You don't want to talk about it? I don't know. OK, here's what I'm going to say about Infinity Wars. Okay. I'll say my piece. And if you and don't want to talk about it after I say my piece, it's then you don't and have to. Wait, it's Infinity Wars. War. Battles. Sorry. War. <laughs> it's Infinity War. <laughs> Not multiple <gasps> wars. Okay. All right. All I'm going to say, this is non-spoiler whatsoever about Infinity Wars. Oh, my it God. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you have this podcast memorized of what you want to say. What? No, I don't. And that's why you keep repeating <laughs> wars and keep <laughs> this I just genuinely thought it was Infinity on. Wars. Let's have like, let's have I wrote down Infinity Wars on my notepad. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Definitely not. That's funny, though. Uh, no, I, um, 
it just really sets the tone right from the very beginning. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's like so thoughtfully made and it had to be because so much goes down like when you're bringing in this entire marvel universe of all of these characters from like more than a dozen movies that you've watched and loved it needs to be intensely packed it's so dense right yeah so it's so intentional and the and you know what um all of the movies all of the marvel movies that led up to this the tones were very different like the guardians of the galaxy was way different from the tones of captain america Mm -hmm. or the iron man movies but all together it it worked and seeing like dr strange and iron man interacting yeah seeing those all these people dynamics yeah it's it really worked like it's even if you're not a marvel movie fan it's worth seeing something that giant. It mm-hmm. was huge. It felt like a completely different movie going experience. And yeah. the Russo brothers and Kevin Feige, who uh, it, they, they're all just did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. At it, and it's been like 10 years in the making. It's insane. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, and when you see like so much stuff goes down in this film. So this isn't like front and center whatsoever, what I'm about to mention, but there's a lot of like human behavior that's really at the center point in a subtle kind of way. Like a lot of um, egos clashing with each other yeah. and people that you, you're like, oh, I never would have thought. But now that I see these two people together, of course, this is what would be going down. Yeah. And it's really cool to, to see those universes and collide. It's, and it's interesting if you're a fan of the other movies leading up to it, they really take into account the what just happened in that personal characters universe mm. like uh right, when you think wise. about star lord's character he just you know he's a uh, his character is a little bit you can tell he was affected by just what what just kind of went down right which was he spoilers um killing his own father right in the past movie this is not spoilers for Infinity no that was War. that was, Gu- that was Ga- guardians of the galaxy 2 yeah which should have seen it by now yeah it's been no, a year totally spoilers for that movie for sure but oh. no he that's what basically what he had just gone yeah, through just gone through same with thor just gone through a whole bunch of stuff and that movie and Hulk, was semi and yeah what he would gone through in that movie yeah and you can see they really took into account all of the other movies in the cinematic universe and it was very well done it was it, it was it could have been a complete disaster with just it could have been right from the script but you know what they know how to handle you know you know what it makes me think of Hmm. this whole movie makes me think of when i went we went to that temple that really modern day temple in thailand right and you we looked on the walls you didn't get to go to this one um because you were sick or something or we didn't want to pay for both of us to go and you didn't want to go so i I I had to find a bathroom and it was a really short stop Right, and so I explored, and and on the old temples they have like paintings or or carvings of like the monkey god or all these kind of myths over like thousands of years, mm-hmm. and uh, this one was a modern um, temple, and on one side they had all modern day drawings, and I was like, dang, like these are like these are myths. These are like they even Thanos is like a god. Like he's the, he has his own mythology. Like Thanos is actually a Greek god, right? Too. But like I mean, all is, of these characters are gods to us these days. The yeah, way that we, huge. you know, our kids are wearing them on their T-shirts and have toys, and you know, they're all over our homes. People have the you know memorabilia from all of these yeah. shows plastered on their binders and their walls and tattoos. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, and it's uh, yeah, they're these huge archetypes, and the, and these characters have these huge arcs that are really important to us. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what I gotta say about this is, uh, without spoilers, obviously, is the lead um, character, who is Thanos. Who's it's his movie. Um, he has a lot. He's it's super dynamic. He has an incredible arc. He did a very <coughs> fantastic <coughs> and acting the CG. Job. CG was fantastic. Oh, it was seamless. Actually, <coughs> I don't think that I have ever seen a movie that was that um, that um, seamless. Like, you're so immersed in what you're watching that you don't stop to think, hey, that person's CG, oh, they did a pretty good job. It's like an afterthought mm-hmm. later, you're just like, oh, yeah, that wasn't a real alien. That was like a, a CG yeah. person. It was crazy. Yeah, it was really good. It was 
it was good especially thanos like what they did was nuts especially with like the subtleties and the emotion mm-hmm. of like you can tell that they really played off of his uh oh, what's who's the actor that was the actor jo- josh brolin josh brolin yeah they really played off of his uh, his like face and mm-hmm. his acting and oh, it was, definitely it's worth it and uh it was shot in imax and my only regret is that we didn't go see it in imax oh i didn't the whole realize that film was, a- was shot in imax what does that mean um, larger aspect ratio. It's mm. like a huge as, as opposed to like film is 35 millimeter. I think it's like, it's 70 millimeter. So it's like the sensor size is really big. So it's more color information. Just oh. huge. Yeah. Cause like IMAX well, like regular film again. is this big. IMAX film is like this big. Oof. So it's just like, it's j- just, just clearer. More, just bigger. Yeah. It's hard to explain what, how it, how it feels, mm-hmm. but, or the, the experience of a larger sensor or a larger film is, but apparently it's worth it. Hmm. So. I will say one of my favorite, um, parts of the movie involved Groot. I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I liked that part. What about you? What, what a favorite part of the movie with no spoilers involved um probably it's hard to say i just i would say just the whole character the arc of thanos Mm -hmm. was just fascinating it's very uh surprising yeah and it, it was like it was like you he it's a villain that doesn't have a generic motivation like you know how there's like it's not so black and white that he's yeah which was quite surprising yeah like there's like a common superhero villain is like, I'm going to change the evolution course of humans. Like we're going to get to the next level of evolution. So I'm going to mutate everybody or I'm going to wipe out everybody or, you know, there's the motivation is really complex Mm -hmm. and it's like the, and the search for these infinity stones is really cool too, because like the whole, this isn't spoilers at all. This is like, it's important to know this. And they, they they explain it right off the top. Whereas Thanos has this, it's called the infinity gauntlet. That's this big metal glove. And, uh, he needs to, uh, there's five or six infinity stones that he needs to kind of put on to come all 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 over the glove. And once he can do that, he becomes the most powerful being in the universe. And each of these stones have very specific powers to them. Like there's the, Ooh, uh there's the <laughs> power soul. stone there's the uh space stone there's the time stone there's the soul soul stone there's the mind stone and there's a time stone right and so all combined they kind of create this the most powerful person especially with this gauntlet and mm-hmm. if you snap your fingers you can wipe out all half of the universe and that's like that's been in comic books that's like a very common thing mm-hmm. and they even say that in the trailer so mm-hmm. But that's, uh, it's cool because in the, I forget how many movies leading up to this, starting from the first Iron Man, they talk a lot about these Infinity Stones in the Tesseracts or in all of these like mm-hmm. different they myths. They come up in the other movies. They come movies. up a lot in the other movies. So this kind of like brings everything together yeah. in a really crazy way. Yeah, so cool. Two things to not do when you are going in to see Infinity Wars. One of them oh is my gosh. not pee. Stop. You need to not you, Infinity War. I did it again. Oh. I'm gonna stop you. I'm gonna derail you every time. You say it's it. not necessary. Just let me do it. Okay, it's, I'll let it's, you do it. You know what? You're fighting a losing battle here. A I losing like wars. I'm, I'm, st- I'm t- <laughs> oh okay. okay. Anyway, one of the things you need to yeah. Okay, I'll let you. I'll let one you of the keep things you need to not do before you go see Infinity Wars in theaters. Oh my is gosh. Not oh pee. my Johnny, gosh! You need to just get over it. I'm gonna call it Infinity Wars oh for the rest gosh. of my I'm, life. I'm gonna interrupt you every <laughs> single time. You can't train me, okay? You trying to change me? No. Yeah. I'm trying right? to correct you. Yeah. Well, you're is trying that the to same thing. Me. You're trying to change. It's the same thing. Okay. Anyway, can okay. you just let me finish? Okay, I'll let you finish. You're derailing when I'm. I'm not even gonna bother. No, 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 no. There was two things I already said. No, no, no. Just say it. No, I'm sorry. Two of the things you shouldn't do. Before you go see Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, proceed. <laughs> you need to go pee before you see yes, Infinity you War. Do. Even if you just went before you left the house. It's two and a half hours. It's two and a half hours long. And also, you probably shouldn't drink an entire pitcher of beer no. and, a so- and a soda water. No, that's you actually really like shouldn't. That's a, a sub part of the first thing I said is the whole peeing factor. And then the second thing you probably shouldn't do is eat a whole meal 
while you're watching the opening scene because like I don't even remember what I ate or what the food tasted like or anything. Like, no, it it jumps right in. So yeah. just don't even try eating a meal. Unless at the it's same just time. snack, like popcorn, throw it in your mouth. Popcorn is looking. essential tacos, for Infinity Wars. Tacos. Mm. No, the ta- I was really disappointed eating my taco actually because I was like, this is so, this is not what I want right now. All I want is to watch the screen, yeah. and I've got like shrimp in my mouth and on your hands. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, popcorn, yes. Meal, no. No. For Infinity War. Check. Another thing you should you do. Got it, Johnny. You've you trained me. All right, <laughs> I'm I'm your trained it's good. husky dog it's good. <laughs> running through the snow. Husky dog, Infinity saying War. war. <laughs> I just honestly can't believe you keep saying it. Yeah. It's funny. It's just ingrained in my brain. Okay. In my brain. In your brain. Ingrained in my brain. You're you mad at me. Are you well, mad at me? You now you've com- you know what I had to do in order to learn how to say Infinity War is the rest of my brain all of like my neurons have now been like rerouted and oh, and wow. I'm I'm all messed up. Wow. I'm sorry, but is that a good thing? I don't know if I can do the podcast anymore. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it has been an hour. Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I could do it, but you could do you it. Just, you just, you know, my brain, my Did brain's I hurt, all I hurt you. I hurt you a little up. bit. Oh, I'm sorry. It just, I had to work really hard to, to get, get around it. Yeah. And it, I got no brain power left. Oh man. You don't think it's funny? What? You don't think it's, you don't see the joke in it at all? Not when I'm trying to say something and you just keep derailing me. <laughs> but that's that's what's funny. Uh, we got it though. Got on it. a scale of one to ten, how happy? <laughs> how happy? How happy are, are you, you with your smile? <gasps> oh, James A. Caster, do the two, we love you. Do the, do to the teeth, to the teeth, do, <laughs> do the two teeth have teeth too? Do the two teeth? It's have not funny teeth when teeth. we say it. No. Well, are you mad at me? No, I'm not I feel mad. like you're mad at me. You did no. that. You did that whole. I'm not gonna finish. That's I know, like but it was just for fun. Oh, so now it's a joke. Okay, fine. You know what? I should. Were have you said mad it. at me? No, I'm not. I'm not Are mad you? at you. But my brain is really <laughs> weirded out now. Really? So I had I, to work I, really hard. You just. I had to focus all of my brain energy, which was focused on this podcast, to stopping saying infinity wars. I think. Let's be transparent right here. I think what happened from the get go is you activated my shithead rebellious side when you said that I couldn't talk about what I wanted to talk about because you had a plan to do it later on in the podcast. And in my you mind... You told me and you rule my, this podcast, so I'm ruling yeah, this podcast, sure. but then your rebelliousness is yeah. just like, no, you don't rule but this I'm podcast. Like, what? <laughs> you're... And now, now, like, the whole, like, you're not the boss of me kind of shitty shithead... Is has been activated. Are you going to be a problem in Am this I podcast? Gonna be a problem? Yeah, are you going to be a problem when I'm leading this podcast? Maybe. I but think you are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I think that's just what happened, and then I kind of went took it further and mm-hmm. further, and then you kind of were you were just giving me opportunity. You're just like throwing me perfect pitches <laughs> right across the plate. I just couldn't. Well, I let's just establish this right now. I lead the podcast. And where I lead, you follow. Wow. Really? Yes. Okay. Isn't that what we established from the very beginning? Yeah, sure. But I think, but don't we want to have this be like just regular conversations that we have? Like, it's not like when we have conversations normally, you're like, I'm the leader in this conversation. Because like the whole point of this podcast is to have conversations more. Like, you know, it's it's a tricky thing. It's a tricky thing. We're still feeling it right, out. Right, fourteen episodes. But when I on. when I listen to, are you ridiculing? Are you ridiculing us? No. <laughs> fourteen episodes in, we're still figuring it out. It's like ninety years old. You're still figuring it out. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, there's ep- <laughs> there's podcasts that have hundreds of episodes. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, it's absolutely yeah, yeah. true. Um, you know, it, it's a tricky thing because like when I listen to podcasts, you know, I like to listen and to, to see what I like and to take away what I don't like. And I, for me personally, listening to a podcast, kind of knowing a bit of what is to come, just a little bit of structure and we can just like dilly dally and jump all around whatever we want. But if I know that there's one thing that's coming up to talk about, it anchors it a little bit. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, you could do that in the intro. Right. And just, we have done that in the past. I must say, we, this is the one, this is the first episode where it's just like, we're going to, where you intro something and we don't get to go into it right away. Mm-hmm. 
And I feel like that would have been felt really natural. And I felt a little bit derailed. Maybe it's like a, like if you, if we are going to lead the podcast, are you leading the topic or are you leading the conversation? Do you know what I mean? mm -hmm. What's the, it's just like a question. I, I don't know. I mean, if this didn't work for you. What's the priority here? No, I I think it's fine. I think it's good that we're talking through it right now. (laughs) It's very meta. (laughs) It's super meta. So meta. Uh, Well, okay. But like, how do, like, do we want it to be like a a flow? Like a real, because our best podcasts have been very vibey and very just flowy onto the next topic. Or do we want it to kind of. I think the only thing that was really derailing the flow was you resisting what I was trying to do. Yeah, maybe. But it was also just like, I had to just take a back seat, it felt like. I think I don't know. I Maybe mean, not. it didn't have to be like that. If you were like on the improv stage right now, you'd just have to roll with the train, right? Yeah, but I would be the only one rolling with the train because you weren't rolling with my train because the timing wasn't right. We're fighting. <laughs> we're having a we're having a mini fight on the podcast. Wow! I knew this would come. I knew this day would come where we would have a fight. A little bit. We weren't, but I, it's not that. Okay, the train was rolling, yeah. and I steered the train but you didn't want the train to go that way. Right. Or it was more, it was more like, because it was like the train was going and, and I took the wheel for a second Mm -hmm. and you're like, I'm the captain. We're going this way. That doesn't sound so bad. Maybe, (laughs) but we're already rolling in that direction. No, we weren't really though. We weren't actually talking about infinity wars yet. Right. Oh I gosh. established it oh right in the beginning. <laughs> like, we just need to end this podcast oh here because that, I'm not going to stop saying Infinity it. Wars. But I thought I rewired your brain. Well, now we're focused on the podcast again. So I. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is how much energy it takes for me to try and focus on saying Infinity War is that I pretty much can't talk about anything else except what? trying to say Infinity War. That's wild. So once we start talking about other shit, it's going to come out again. As Infinity Wars. Yeah. Like there's multiple wars. There's multiple stones. So, so does multiple each stone equal a war? Kind of. Uh, well, a battle for sure. What? Are, what does? What makes up multiple wars? Multiple battles make up multiple wars. I'm not a history battles, buff, man. Me neither. Or a war buff. <laughs> or a history buff. I don't no, even know. Me neither. Fact is, it was a great movie. It was. Watch it. Um, and, uh, moral of the story here is, I don't know what it is. Um, make sure you pee before the movie. Yeah. Make sure you have and popcorn even, and not an entire Even if meal. you don't have to pee. Even if you don't have to pee. Just like, just, just try really hard to squish it out. And on your way out of the theater, when you see the little jar of like individually packaged chocolate mints, grab, grab a whole handful. Just take them all. And then as you walk past another one of the tills, later and you see another jar pretend like you didn't already grab a bunch of chocolates and go ooh, chocolate and grab some yeah more. <laughs> yeah that's what we do that's our in fact i have i've been playing with like a melted one of those oh, what's it, melted that it, looks it fun. Went hard again nice you get this, <laughs> and now it's a completely different shape uh well uh, uh, one thing that i wouldn't do again what's that probably would have affected this p cast is we got frosties after mm-hmm. right and we've been coughing once again i i saw that coming before yeah. oh my god before gosh. getting the frosties but that i still just wanted rule. it yeah that's the problem with frosties is when you want it and i'm totally breaking like totally my diet has been just out the window thanks vietnam and <laughs> stress and frosties mm-hmm. <sighs> that's what happens you're see this is, is a this is this podcast is off the rails. A reflection of what me being overworked is doing to our relationship. I think, yeah, that's Do you think so? pretty accurate. Yeah? Mm. Think a little, maybe I, I've just had a little bit too, a, too much autonomy this last little while. Right. And I'm like, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Telling me what to do? No uh, way. I got to keep you in line somehow. Maybe. <laughs> no, you don't like that at all. No. It doesn't work for you. I get it. I wish it worked for me, but then I don't. I don't know. I'm. A, I'm. You are a double-edged sword. Double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. Double-edged? Oh no! Did I just? <laughs> did I just do one of those stupid things? It's not double-edged. Is double-edged. 
edged? Why did I think it was edged? Maybe like, like blessed. Maybe like a New Zealander would say it like maybe that. Maybe in, in old English. Double edged. Uh, maybe in double old edged. English it's double edged. Double edged. <laughs> sword. Oh. Double edged sword. Yeah. Double edged sword. Well, okay, so. But wait. Next week your mom's ah, going to be here. Am I double edged sword? Because <laughs> wouldn't it be more like a regular sword because like the two sides are different one side is sharp the other is dull because if it's double-edged sword both of them are the same both of them are going to cut you but if it's sounds regu- accurate but if it's a regular <laughs> saw, oh my gosh uh, oh ow ouch <laughs> your single-edged sword hey. just sliced me <laughs> my single edge uh i'm not on my game anymore i am completely did i derail off my you? game I don't like fighting. Are we fighting? You said we were fighting, so now I feel like we must have been fighting. Oh, oh my gosh. No, I'm just, it's, it's honestly, it's the exhaustion of trying to say Infinity War. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You're exhausted by saying, that's, cr- that's wild. I just, I had to put all my mental Every. energy towards that, and mental energy is precious to me these days. Yeah, to just like say the proper movie title, and by removing an S. Make me sound so stupid. No, I <laughs> ridicule me some more. Why don't you? Oh, oh we're only into our fourteenth podcast. Oh, oh man, you're sensitive. <laughs> oh, you're right. We need we need a vacation together. We need a vacation, and um, I vacation. need to sleep in. Can I sleep in tomorrow? Yeah, oh, I'm gonna yeah. go to bed right now. Bleep. I just did something bleep worthy because I need to sleep in that bed. I said the F word and it wasn't food. I did say food earlier though. I'm right, yeah, but just now. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what movie did we see? Infinity Wars. No. Now I'm being the rebel. <laughs> was that on purpose? You can't change Was me. that on purpose? That one was on purpose. Okay. I'm not putting the mental energy towards that anymore. <laughs> See, just trying to think about it again made me Infinity stutter. Infinity Wars. <laughs> Give it a shot. It feels nice. Infinity Wars. See? Feels good. Infinity War. Infinity Wars. What do I think of when I think about multiple wars? I still think about like, Oh no, like two completely different wars that are unrelated are happening at the same time. You know, if we debate this, we actually will be doing some spoilers. You know what's crazy? Hmm. If let's do a search. I'm going to search Infinity Wars, see if it's a thing. Okay. See if Infinity Wars comes up. It's no. It just, just auto corrects it. Infinity, Infinity War. War. Everybody knows yeah. it's Infinity War but me. No, 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 no. Multiple wars. Multiple wars. Why? Why? Are we oh, looking? this is wars. Is like spanning multiple wars. Is like time. So war starts and ends, and another one starts and ends. Mm. That's what would be two wars. I don't know what constitutes a war. It's people fighting. Just <sighs> like a battle. Yeah, but then what is a war? I don't know. What we just hey, watched. How was do we war call this night? Because uh, I'm tired. You're tired. Yep, yeah, we're tired. We're stuttering. We're, uh, we need to process all of these infinity wars. And we need to, you need to sleep on it. <laughs> Maybe when you wake up, you will, it won't the be. The infinity war will have really set in and infinity wars <laughs> will have died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Need to sleep on it. All right, darling. Thanks right. for. I, love, uh, I really do love you. I really do even love though, you too. Even you know, though we were fighting. Even though we had a really big, terrible fight. Blow up. It was a huge fight that we had. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I tried I to felt put the you tension. in your place. I was just, and Yeah. I think Likewise. we like moved away from each other a little bit. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but Look we'll at how I'm I was doing this. I was doing this before. Mm-hmm. I was kind of like comfortably leaning. Now I'm just like combat mode. Suspicious. My body language is more like body language is so interesting to watch people when they talk. What was if that? people if people hold like a drink in front of them in between you and them, that's because they're feeling slightly uncomfortable and they need to like. Oh, I heard palms is a thing. If somebody isn't showing you their palms, it means they don't trust you. Well, both of our palms are away from each other. What do we <gasps> oh have my here? Gosh. Because it's like, oh, look, I don't have any weapons. But if you do this, you're just like, oh, I have a look weapon. Look, my honey in my hands. But anyway, I have to say it feels good. This week I'm feeling great to be working 
and like do, the writing that I'm doing is super exciting. We were going to talk about plastics. Awesome. I'm kind of too tired to talk about this now. All I will say is that I found out how much plastic bottles we're using per minute, a million bottles a minute as in the world. One million. Which is insane. And then I looked in my fridge and just saw plastic everywhere. I'm just like, ah. Uh, Not just, but the language should be single use plastic. Single because use plastic we do again. use, there's plastic here, there's plastic here, there's plastic here, there's plastic. You're Every, pointing to parts of our microphone right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is. There's lots of things we have that are plastic. Like our plastic reusable water bad. bottles are plastic, yeah. but it's the single use stuff that. It's the single use plastic. And there's so, that's so much in our, that's involved with our food and with packaging, our food packaging. Toys. Oh my gosh. It's like crazy. we ordered soda waters, our beers came in glasses, but then they bring us soda waters with a s cup with a cap on it and, and a, a straw. plastic straw. Yeah. And As if get, it's like, we don't want you to, just in case you spill it, but then I'm it's like, just convenient. It's all about convenience. Yeah. Like we, if we really, if it was imminent and it was in front of our faces that like the resources we were using were finite and we could see it and it was affecting like our lives physically in front of us here individually, we would very quickly come up with solutions. Like we wouldn't have got a frosty because we'd be like, you know what? That's a single use cup. I don't need that. I, you know, how about when we bring our kids to daycares and stuff, we bring them their own sippy cups. We bring yeah. them like at the this one place I went to, everybody brings their own reusable plates. It's right. like you just bring your own stuff, but because we need our lives to be convenient, we just don't spare a second thought for it. We just are right. getting stuff that we throw away all the time. Right. But if we could if we didn't have those things, if we just simply did not have these, you know, throwaway stuff, we would just remember to bring our own stuff, bring our own cups, bring our own plates. You know, right. you want a frosty, bring your own cup, right? And spoon, right? Anyway, that's my which plastic we rant. But which writing we did writing about that stuff is very exciting. I love um, I love figuring out how to communicate things succinctly. And you're really good at it. I think that's our cue. Yeah, you just yawn, talked. Just be careful not to plural pluralize things that aren't. Are you reiterating to me? Like, <laughs> you just like find this so important, and I don't. I just, it's not. I don't find it important. I just find it. It's just something you have on me. I feel like it's like a <laughs> button. It's a button that Forrest really wants to press, mm -hmm. like, or or a knife that. that he wants to pull out pull of the dishwasher. <laughs> oh, a knife, <laughs> or it's like, yeah, and you're just like, don't do that. When you do that, mommy, dad are gonna be like, don't, don't. Don't touch the flower. And, and he gets all agitated, like, but he just reaches for it even yeah, harder. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what that was. All right, darling. I love, love you. Love and you we'll talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. Bye. That was your weekly dose of merriment. Thanks for hanging out with us. As usual, we appreciate you. And we'd love to connect with you through our social channels. Our handle is at Carly and Johnny, C-A-R-L-Y and J-O-H-N-N-Y. On Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Any links to things we mentioned in this podcast, like the James A. Castor Netflix trailer and any corrections to stupid things we may have said, are up on the website, carlyandjohnny.com, under episode 14. Thanks for listening, and let's hang next week. <laughs>